Excellent. Talking today about book widgets, let's deep dive into Google Classroom and that brand new book widgets add-on. Right, so here we are on our teacher page. Nothing has changed. I'm going to dive into my language class and I'm going to go right onto my classwork. Just like we do when we want to create an assignment, seamless integration, we're going to click create and assignment. Now from that assignment page is where we're going to see the magic happens. And right here on the lower right hand side is where I have my list of add-ons and book widgets is right there. So I now am going to select book widgets, meaning I want to use book widgets to create my assignment. You may be asked to sign in. If you're asked to sign in, it's to get your Google Classroom book widgets together. Mine remembered it because I use my sign in all the time. And you can see here, I have a list of widgets that I've already created. But for tonight, I don't want to use a widget that I've already created. I want to show the integration. So I'm going to select create a new widget. And of course, you can follow along if you want to and post any questions that you have in the chat. Once I select create new widget, here they are, all of my widget types. And just a little heads up, if you look at these widgets and you see the little checkbox, it means that this widget supports that final superpower that I talked to you about, the grading and feedback. And if you see the little video camera, that tells you that that widget supports the third superpower, which was the live monitoring. These are my favorite widgets that I've talked about. And then these are the specialty widgets that I highlighted for you, the math widgets, the third party widgets, and I absolutely love, if you have not checked out, if you're a book widgets user and you haven't checked out the planner or the checklist, I love, love, love these widgets for organizing. Let's start with one of our ready-made or one of our most popular widgets. And um, Jeff, I'm gonna choose a worksheet. So I select worksheet, and this is always my hint to everybody. Work left to right, top to bottom, and follow the blue line. So the blue line skipped the name. So I'm gonna go put in a name here. And I don't need a description, you can if you want to. The about section is also totally optional. So I'm going to jump right to my questions. And now I'm gonna add a question. How many question types do I have, Jeff? 35 question types. And here they are. So these are all of my different question types. I'm going to go ahead and choose a question. Let's do a multiple choice. Let's say you can't find multiple choice. If you use that search button up here, it will narrow down your selections for you. For example, there's nothing that says true false, but if you start typing true false, it will say, here's what we think you want. We think you want a question table. A question table doesn't necessarily have to be true false. It could be yes, no, lots of different things. So we're not limiting you with just true false. So let's go ahead back to our multiple choice. And I'm just going to do a single multiple choice question. So choose a single answer from the list of possibilities. My question, where I'm going to place the directions. So I'm gonna say, choose my directions and select the, let's talk about animals. Since my favorite animal is joining me as my remote work companion, Ken, Kendall. So we're gonna select the jungle animals. And now we're gonna put in our answers. So of course I have to put in my dog, We'll put in a cat. Let's go ahead and put in a lion and a tiger. Now, remember I talked about the auto grading, Jeff? Right now I have dog as the correct answer. I know that that's not my correct answer. So I'm gonna come down to tiger, which is my jungle animal, and I'm going to select tiger. Notice once again, all of these options for your question. A rationale, here's why you got it right or wrong. Hint, what is a jungle animal? What, do you need to read it to your students? Here's where you would embed the audio. Do you want an image? And finally, correction and scoring options. Everything inside book widgets is totally customizable. Everything is there to make teaching and learning easy for you. While I'm here, I also wanna point out this general area. The general area for me is the meat and potatoes of teacher success. The general area has where my scoring options are, so do I want my students to see whether the answer is correct or incorrect? Here's what I love. When my students are practicing in class and it's not an assessment, 
I show them the correct answer right away so that they're not continuing down the path of making mistakes. I can show them if the score is, if the score when they're done. I can provide feedback based on a specific score. And here is what I love. History teachers love this strict answer ordering. I don't want my answers jumbled because I need them to go in a specific sequence. I also can add a password. But here is one thing that I'm going to say I always turn on text to speech. All of my students can benefit from this. Uh, we call it an accommodation, but all of my students can benefit from it. So I turn on my text to speech. Notice it uses your browser. This is not a special tool that Book Widgets has. So it uses your browser text to speech. I want it in English. A scratch pad, a calculator, equation editor. Everything is here for you in that general tab. And I know we're jam packed tonight, Jeff. So I just want to say we have your videos that will guide people through. Can you mention that again? Sure. Where your videos I, are? Absolutely. If you go on over to teachercast.net and you can certainly do a search, we're going to make sure that we have the link for that also in the chat and also in the description. We'll be sharing that a little bit later in the program. And then we also have our channel, uh, our YouTube channel, our Book Widgets channel, which has tons of videos and support as well. I want to show you a time-saving trip. See this little cogwheel up here? I'm going to come up to this cogwheel, and do you see it says import from document? If you have a document, you've been creating materials. I've been a teacher for 38 years. I've got lots of materials, but they're not Book Widgets materials. I'm going to go to my PDF. I'm going to go to my document and import it. But wait, there's more. I can import from a widget. So if I have a widget that I used for practice and now I want to recycle those questions in my quiz, I do that a lot. So I'm going to come down here to my animals worksheet and I'm going to select questions two and three. I'm going to select import. Watch how quickly this goes. Done. Now I have three questions. I, of course, never believe it works. So let's check out the preview button. Here's and I love how fast this is going, right? Like this yeah. is, you know, and, and you even mentioned in here as far as the import, I'm looking at that that import from CSV. There's a lot yes. of coaches that are going to be listening to this. And if you can create one spreadsheet, one CSV, hand that out to multiple teachers, I think that's a win with everybody. I, I agree. And just because I know it's your favorite question type, here we I go. went ahead and I went ahead and added my final picture here, which is that image where students have to label the animals. So I look how quickly. And this is a Pixabay image. Uh, let me highlight that because I didn't show that. I want to make sure I show everybody where that image editor is. So let's go ahead and uh, pick a question. I'm I'm going to pick. Uh, let's go ahead and just do my multiple choice question. Mm, no, that's not a good question for me to choose. Let me let me come back and click my annotate picture. And I need a picture, right? I'm going to come right here. I can bring a picture off of my desktop. I can bring a picture from Google Drive, but I'm going to work smarter, not harder. I'm going to search for a lion. I like the smiling giraffe. That's that was oh. that's my favorite part of that of that uh, of that picture there. <laughs> I'm gonna search for that smiling giraffe. Look at all these giraffes I have. This is another smiling and, giraffe. Yep. And then the minute I get my giraffe that I like, I select him. Done. That picture is in my editor. If I needed to do anything to edit the image, I certainly can. But everything is there for me to fully and easily import pictures from that Pixabay editor. And just a little hint, sometimes what I do when I'm getting a background image, especially for my younger students, I'll add the word clip art. That, that's a power user. Yeah, and it gives me just a little bit of extra. So uh, it doesn't work all the time, but I have tons of hacks that I like uh, inside book widgets. So I really want to highlight, I know you already talked about it, Jeff, but I really want to highlight that customization. It's, it's really, really powerful. So now we're ready to assign the widget. We've got to get the widget to our students. I'm going to choose the word choose. So I select choose. Behind the scenes, book widgets is making its magic. Getting my widget ready. 
boom, there's my assignment. So I'm still on the teacher console, so I'm not quite done. I have to come up here to assign. And just like with anything else in Google Classroom, you can save it as a draft. You can choose the students you assign it to. So a lot of times I will make two separate widgets, one for students that have accommodations and one that doesn't. They look exactly the same, but then I assign it um, based on those students. So I'm gonna now, select assign. Now, before you go too farther in there, this is Google Classroom. You can do more in there. You can add a doc, yeah. a sheet, a slide, a YouTube. You can make this assignment anything that you need to and be totally creative with it. And by the way, Cheryl, I don't know if you noticed, but people in the chat are saying, this is great, and they're applauding you. Oh, yay, that makes me so happy. So now I'm logged in as Sam. Sam is a student in my language class. He's my favorite student. So um, Sam is gonna come over to his language class and look, right there is our assignment, Jeff and Cheryl. So Sam knows he has a new assignment, the process doesn't change. He clicks on the assignment in the classroom. He knows now he's going to go up here to open the assignment. Now here is Sam's assignment exactly as you and I saw. Notice the little notation. We're gonna share your progress on this activity with your teacher. Here's the submit button, the trash can, super important. You have to remind your students about the trash can. The trash can deletes every answer on the quiz, the worksheet, the activity. I've had tears because they think it only deletes one answer or the wrong answers. So you really have to be careful about that. Now, my, my student Sam is gonna choose his answers. You'll notice here that it's a single answer. What? Remember I said, I'm gonna show you if your answer is right or wrong. Tiger lights up with the green check right away so that Sam knows whether or not his answer is right or wrong. Look at these beautiful images from Pixabay. These are all images from Pixabay. So we're gonna connect the animals. And you can see here what Sam is doing as he connects the animals. And once again, highlighted whether it's right or wrong. All of these are gonna be auto graded by, by book widgets. The big five, you know the big five, Jeff? Oh, let's see, I can usually get three of them. Um, let's see, uh, was it Tiger, okay, maybe tiger. Rhino? Rhino? And and I'm not sure about this one, but I mentioned it before. Let's go with giraffe. Okay, so see it's blue. We know that a tiger and a giraffe are not what we need, right? Uh -oh. How? So we're gonna click off those blues. Wildebeest or water buffalo? What is that? Yep, that's that giant water buffalo. Water buffalo. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if and anybody the out there wants to wants to play this game too in the chat, please feel free. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, here, our students are going to name the animal. And the really great thing about this is some of my students will write monkey, but some of my other students might write a monkey. And if in your setup, you have used the double hashtag to say, I have more than one right answer, book widgets will accept any answer. So you could say monkey or a monkey. And uh, I'll dive in and show you how to do that um, so that think of all the ways your students will answer, put them with the double hashtag and book widgets will do that auto grading for you, saving you all of that time.